I mean, these guys are definitely all over it. Okay. Made them forget all about bench walk. So. Disappointed too? Yeah. Well. Once I'm in the app. No one from the game. Okay. Yep. All right, so Good evening. Um, welcome to the September 15th, 2016 City Council meeting for the City of Northampton. I'm Bill Dwight. I'll be presiding tonight. Um, we start before we convene, determine we have a quorum with um, public comment section, which is where we invite the public to speak on any topic. It doesn't have to be on the agenda or subject to discussion tonight. Um, we ask a few things of you. One, to keep your remarks under three minutes, a little timer there. Also, um, respecting the decorum of the chamber by um, not saying any defamatory remarks about private citizens. The people arrayed here, we aren't private citizens. We're elected officials. You can say whatever you want about us as long as it can be broadcast. Um, the uh, other thing we ask that you do is when you come up to state your name and your address and then state your state your com make your comments should also know one other caveat is that the under condition of our rules we don't respond we will listen and hear what you have to say but there's you directing questions to us um, we're not allowed to answer and the reason for that is because this is your turn to speak as if you stick around you'll see that we'll do plenty of talking after that and you'll just go get pretty tired of us pretty quickly so so, with all that in place, um, first up we have signed up uh, to speak is Shelley Berkowitz, please. Um, so, on the surface, I'm here. Uh, first of all, I'm at 12 Pilgrim Drive in Northampton for 21 years. I've lived in this town. And I'm here on the surface about a parking ticket, but I would not come for a $25 parking ticket. Uh, it's more the spirit of the law and the way the, the law was interpreted or inconsistently enforced uh, that I think has issues for this town uh, that made me decide to come. So the circumstances are as follows. On uh, August 24th, uh, I uh, went downtown to buy an electric keyboard. And I went to a birdhouse uh, music uh, on Main Street. I parked legally around the corner. It was the closest I found. I went into the store, found a lovely electric keyboard. It was heavy. Uh, the person in the store said, take your car, drive it right in front of the uh, store, uh, and I'll load it right up for you And uh, because it's very heavy. So I did that, uh, and uh, I look, had my flashers, my blinkers on. I was not uh, double parked. I was not uh, parked in front of a handicap ramp. I was not uh, uh, parked uh, uh, in front of a pedestrian crossing. Um, and I went into the store very quickly to make contact with the person who saw me right away. But by the time I went in the store and came out with the person to load up this piano, which is very heavy, uh, there was already a uh, parking attendant, meter maid, whatever the term is, uh, badge number M2, who had already started to write up a ticket. Uh, I, uh, I looked her in the eye nicely and explained the circumstances. I was there less than 45 seconds, less than a minute from the time this began to end. And the uh, person from the store confirmed and said, uh, uh, you know, she's, she's just, pick she's just uh, unloading this piano. Despite that, she responded very officiously and, and didn't look me in the eye. She said that she could not uh, stop the process, quote unquote. Uh, and only afterwards when I wished her somewhat sarcastically a good dinner, uh, that she very emphatically responded, I certainly will. Uh, so uh, my 
concern here is not for the $25 fee. I did go through the motions. I called the parking office, spoke to David Molnar. He told me their responsibility is just for interpreting that the law has been followed. And yes, it was uh, a uh, zone that says uh, no parking. Um, there is no available loading or unloading uh, in that store's vicinity. He said, well, I suppose they could have given you a dolly, uh, a dolly around the corner. They couldn't leave their store unattended to do this. Now, my concern is with the um, arbitrary and inconsistent enforcement of this, as the store owner has told me, that they were told by the city that as a business they could have somebody just unload very briefly <coughs> as long as the person is not leaving the car unattended. And uh, he was outraged by this. Uh, he couldn't come tonight, but he wrote me an email uh, saying uh, what I've described, that um, we should let the city council know that we're frustrated by the ticket that was issued to you when loading in front of our store. We have been told consistently throughout the last few months by the parking attendant officers that it's okay for people to park in front of the store to load heavy objects, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you can see that being told one thing and then being subject to something entirely different is frustrating to us and our customers. This came across as unnecessarily punitive and unfriendly. I hope that the overbearing nature of parking enforcement and the lack of p parking availability for doing, uh, doing business in our town are issues that receive more creative solutions soon. Uh, John Aronson. Um, to me, it was more the personal thing that uh, this is a small town, Northampton. You have businesses, they pay a pretty penny for rent and taxes, uh, and uh, there was no other logical thing to do. Um, he has told me he's seen people in the same circumstances and there was no ticket issued. Um, at least it has to be enforced consistently. Uh, I did go through the motions of appealing it, it was denied. Um, and again, I'm not poor. Uh, I would be happy to donate the $25 to a good cause. I'm, I'm going to pay it. Um, but it, it's the idea that this is enforced in this very callous and uh, unempowering way uh, to a uh, parking attendant to see the circumstance. And there's really no other uh, option in that circumstance. Uh, so that's uh, really it. In New York City, I would have expected this. And yet the irony was three weeks ago, I was in New York City with my daughter in the car and something similar happened. And he just waved us and said, you should know what, what the rule is. And that was it. I didn't expect this in Northampton. So I hope you'll consider this. I'm not sure what I'm asking other than to have this acknowledged. And, uh, you can respond how I should proceed from here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, uh, by the way, Jen, I'm getting notes that the sound is not broadcasting. I can't, I can't do anything about it. Got it. Okay. Uh, Lee Spector, please. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, Lee Spector, 34 Columbus Avenue. And I just want to make two quick comments. On topics not on the agenda, street lights and Wi-Fi. Um, on the new brighter street lights that are apparently coming, um, I don't actually know uh, the details about health and safety concerns from brighter, whiter lights, but I know enough about research on perception and cognition to know that there could be some really uh, real uh, downsides to having uh, much brighter and whiter streetlights. So I hope they're being taken seriously. Um, I've seen some discussion of them. I don't know if you've discussed them here. Uh, however, I did go and look at the test lights, and I have to say that it was disturbing how bright and white they were. And I will be very sad if my quiet little uh, street is lit up like that all night, every night. Um, it feels to me like it's taking away the, the night. Um, and when I went to look at them and I walked away from them, um, it was like this relief that, oh, it's night again. I'm outside on this quiet, small town street, whereas before I felt like I was in um, a movie set or something. Um, I think it'll be a real loss to the community not to have uh, uh, the kind of night that we have now if we're all lit up in that harsh light. Okay, um, on Wi-Fi, um, I love the new Pulaski Park. I love it so much, I can't tell you. Um, and I was delighted that there's city Wi-Fi that you can get there. And then I was less delighted when I realized that you can't send and receive email unless you're doing it through a web browser there because the ports on the Wi-Fi are set in a certain way that I haven't seen on a public Wi-Fi for, 
maybe a decade or something like that. Um, so any coffee shop, you can use your mail application, everything works. There it doesn't. I had an email exchange with the head of IT for the city, uh, who was very courteous and promptly replied to me, but the basic story was, well, uh, we're thinking of expanding the Wi-Fi to other areas, and when we do that, we'll fix this. Um, but uh, he wasn't really clear if that will happen or when that will happen. But right now, there's Wi-Fi in our lovely new park, but it's weirdly broken. Um, and I've talked to some other people who are like, yeah, it's weird. They didn't know to check this works and that doesn't work. Anyway, um, it would be lovely if our lovely park, the Wi-Fi, worked. I, I would sit out there and work. A lot of other people would. There'd be other kinds of activities. But now it's sort of halfway there, and it's, it's frustrating. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's all I have signed up. Uh, is there anyone else interested in speaking this time? You don't have to be signed up. If you feel impelled to, compelled to speak, now's the time. All righty. I'm going to ask the uh, administrative assistant to call the roll, please. Councilor Dwight? Here. Councilor Klein? Here. Councilor Lavar? Present. Councilor Murphy? Here. Councilor O'Donnell? Here. Councilor Sherra? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Councilor Bidwell is absent with acknowledgement, and um, we're on our way. So, uh, first up, I have, uh, I have to announce a couple of public hearings. Um, the first one is uh, the second notice uh, for the Northampton City Council will hold a public hearing here on Thursday, October 16th, 2016, at 7.05 p.m. Um, at the City Council Chambers at 212 Main Street, Northampton, to discuss the percentages of, local, of the local tax levy to be borne by each class of real and personal property within the City of Northampton for FY 2017 in accordance with Chapter 40, Section 56 of the Massachusetts General Laws. And just for clarification, this is the, um, the tax factor is has been often discussed um, it's different than the tax rate it's basically how we divide the tax burden among taxpayers and um, by way of example the city of Springfield and the city of Holyoke actually have a split tax rate they uh, their commercial tax rate is higher than their residential uh, taxes Northampton we have what's called a factor of one Everyone pays the same rate. Um, and there have been discussions ongoing off and on for years, but by and large, th this is something that maybe the public has some interest in. And so if so, um, please make your thoughts, share us your thoughts with either by mail or coming into this public meeting. Also, there's um, a public hearing regarding an application for fuel storage, and this is pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 148, Section 13. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Northampton City Council will hold a public hearing regarding a fuel storage license application submitted by Cumberland Farms, 100 Crossing Boulevard in Framingham, Mass. Uh, the land affected by the application is located at 53 and 55 Main Street in Florence. That's the parcel ID map is 17C, Lot 197 and map 23A, lot uh, 77. And the application seeks to amend the existing fuel storage license to allow for A, storage of 8,000 gallons of diesel product, class two in UST container, and B, for additional 11,000 gallons of gasoline, class uh, one IB, I'm sorry, in UST container, for a total storage of 32,000 gallons of gasoline. The public hearing will be here, uh, held here on Thursday, October 6, 2016 at 7.30 p.m. Once again, Council Chambers here in the Wallace J. Polchowski Municipal Building at 212 Main Street in Northampton. And the City Council will hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. Now, recognition of and one minute announcements by Councilors. Councilors, any? Councilor Sharon, then Councilor Klein. Saturday, which is September 17th from 11 to 4 at Jackson Street School, they're having a carnival. It's the first annual um, Jackson Street School PTO carnival, and it will be amazing. Everybody should go. Uh, free, open to the public. Everybody's welcome. Um, I've had sneak peeks all summer of some of the games that are being made by the parents, and they are nothing short of remarkable. Um, 
and there's going to be a dunk tank and they're looking for some volunteers to go in the dunk tank i have some ideas um and there's food there are raffles it will be a spectacular event so everyone should go bring kids bring grandkids if you don't have kids go anyway um every it <coughs> proceeds um enrichment programs at jackson street they're an amazing it's an ama all of our schools are amazing their pto is really like off the charts and do fantastic stuff and this will be like the event that you definitely don't want to miss so this saturday 11 to 4 at jackson street I, I can't do the dunk tank really I displace all the water and then it wouldn't be fun for anyone else it would just well, maybe we'll make you go last okay council <laughs> fine you had something but i hope i can speak to it as excitedly as uh councillor share just has um this is a repeat i'm reminding folks about the upcoming two public forums on the effort to resettle refugees in Northampton. Um, we've been doing house parties kind of quietly. We've uh, got 16 house parties scheduled over the next um, few months, but these are big public forums and everybody is invited to come. The first one is on Monday, September 19th, so this coming Monday from 6.30 to 8.30 at the JFK Middle School Cafeteria. And the second one is an afternoon meeting, Thursday, September 22nd, 2 to 4 p.m. at the Northampton Senior Center. Um, and this will be a meeting with folks from Catholic Charities, um, members of the Northampton City Council and others. Um, it's an opportunity to talk about um, what the effort will entail, um, what it's going to look like, how people can volunteer um, to resettle 51 refugees in the coming year. No dunk tank. No dunk. <laughs> uh, she noted that people, uh, one of the reasons that Councilor Klein has worked so hard to create these events is also to give people an opportunity to express their concerns and allow them to be addressed and, and heard at, that, at, at those meetings as well. So um, th this is an effort for complete transparency and, and on a noble mission. So, and Councilor Klein and I will be there no dunk tanks, no rotten tomatoes, but we will be speaking. Um, any other one-minute announcements? Can I just note, since uh, apparently there's no sound being transmitted by NCTV, I'm just going to hold this up <laughs> so that the camera can see about the Jackson Street Carnival. Because I'm getting <laughs> messages that people can see me talking excitedly, but they have no idea what I'm talking about. So <laughs> Jackson Street Carnival. Me well, too. I have to say it. That camera's on. They, and, and they, <laughs> I'm pretty confident that on replay, for folks who want to watch this over and over and over again, the will be sound. We're back to the 1970s. <laughs> 50s. Um, okay. Um, now we come up with a section. Which, this is a report to the Northampton City Council on action taken to satisfy committee study requests on the local economy. And this is issued, uh, this is a request made by the Council Vice President Ryan O'Donnell and myself made um, to a very brave committee <laughs> that that did yeoman's work and I would defer at this point to uh, the chair of that committee council Shara. Okay. Um, this I'm not really gonna report on the report I'm just gonna uh, say this is we are making the report that we submitted to the council president and vice president um, available to the full council this report is a summary or accounting of the steps we took to fulfill the committee study request that we received on March 3rd. Um, the request was to study the downtowns of Florence and Northampton's economy. Um, it outlines the meetings that we held, the, it has links to the reports we received, either voluntarily or that we requested from city departments. Uh, research conducted by ourselves with uh, the help of an intern, Jonathan Goldman, who many of us remember um, from being on the Youth Commission and a recent uh, NHS grad. Um, and includes the minutes and the videos for the four forums that we conducted, which were all very, very well attended. Um, so this is just sort of a report outlining all of that. And uh, just to keep you informed of our process, at our next meeting, we are going to be reviewing the, the data that we received through this whole, um, through all those meetings, and we'll be looking at the themes and topics that emerged um, during them, and we'll be deciding which of those will be more fruitful to focus on for our next a uh, few meetings and um, and which ones we want to have a more depth in-depth deliberation about 
um, to see what, if any, recommendations we have um, to bring to the full council in the future. And, and the report is available to the public? It's linked to the agenda. It's also, I believe, on the, the web page that we, is it on the web page we created? Okay. So it'll so be on the web page for the committee study request, which is under city council on, um, on the city website and on the agenda. Thank you all, the, thank you all the committee, to you council sheriff for, for uh, presiding and for all the committee members participating in the public that discussed. Uh, it was a reflection of, of how vested the community is in the workings and the, and the, and the prospects for the downtown. So it, 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 the, I, I, it was a big charge. We, Councilor O'Donnell and I both knew that. But the fact is, is that it, was, it, uh, it went beyond, beyond where we usually have these discussions, which is anecdotally. And this, this is data filled, and we'll have more data. And we'll have a better sense of how, I mean, given our limitations, what, what we can and cannot do. And also, we have a better sense of what the community in the main is hoping for for downtown. So thank you for that. Um, communications proclamations from the mayor. Sitting in the back, I don't see you jumping up. Nope, okay. Um, we come to the resolution that's opposing the lifting of the Commonwealth, uh, the cap on the Commonwealth Charter Schools. Um, this is second reading. This uh, re uh, this resolution was discussed in the council uh, last time. This second reading would be the final reading if it should pass, or even if it should fail. Um, but this is to uh, um, this is the council's expression of their desire to not see the ballot question be realized. That votes that. Uh, will be on the ballot calling for the lifting of the charter school cap, the current charter school cap. Um, and there was a divided vote, but and, and we can have a continued discussion on this, but I'll ask for someone to put it on the floor, please. Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Council Sheriff? Um, I, I wasn't here two weeks ago, um, so I, I missed the, the discussion here in the first vote, but I actually watched it live. Um, there was sound and there was video. Actually, the video was upside down, though, so I held my laptop upside down on my lap. But it's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but uh, so I got to watch what I thought was a very interesting and spirited discussion that that you all had, and I was I was sorry to have missed it. Um, I think it's very hard to argue with the impact. Um, that the current charters have on our district funding. It's, um, it's, sign it's very clear in the budget that we just spent a lot of time really going over and voting on just you know right before the summer. Um, and I think from the discussion, it was clear that we all agree that the funding mechanism is inequitable. Um, so, I, but I, I appreciated what I thought was sort of a, a creative approach that Councillor Murphy put forward for a long-standing problem. And, um, and the idea, was interested in the idea that he had that raising the cap would somehow put a gun to the head of the state legislature and force them to pay attention and change the formula. But um, it seemed to me that that plan would, certainly wouldn't have an immediate effect. It would, um, as charters were founded, it would sort of be a slow, continued bleeding dry of our district schools, not unlike what's happening now. Um, but even even more so, and so you know, I guess the logic is that then we would we'd eventually hit rock bottom, and then the legislature would would be forced to to care to change the the formula. Um, but you know, as as a big supporter of our public of our schools, and uh, the wonderful work that they do to educate our kids, um, <coughs> and personally as a mother of two children who have just begun. Um, their their career in our Northampton public schools um, that 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 strikes me as a very long game gamble that I'm not interested in taking either for my kids or for anyone else's kids um, so I I don't really see why anyone even even people whose children are in the charter schools in our area now who are happy with the education they're getting there I don't really see what anyone would gain from raising the cap um, and creating even more competition on our limited resources. So I thank the sponsors for writing this resolution, and uh, I'm very, I'm happy to vote for it. 
Uh, Councilor Lombard. Yes, um, I said what I had to say two weeks ago, and I'm not going to go through the same thing again. And I am supporting the resolution of, of opposing and lifting the cap on the charter. I am concerned because parents who want an alternative for their children who are not wealthy enough to go to private school have no other option. This really is their only option. I don't like the, although figuratively it sounds interesting, putting a gun to the legislators' heads because maybe we get a lot of things done. Um, they're not going to make a change if they don't have to. They've made it clear because I think most of them endorse this. So they're not going to do anything unless they're forced to do something. And I think, you know, we're not going to have to wait till we hit rock bottom. If the, the voters of the Commonwealth say that we're going to have more charter schools, and they will fix the mechanism because they're not going to let it get that far. They're very affected by several large lobbying groups, which is why they're doing what they're doing. But if the citizens say, let's make a change, they'll make a change. And for a parent who needs to make a change in their mind for their child now, um, that child's in school. If a change comes down the road, it's not going to affect their child. They're probably out of the system before the change takes place. I'm very, you know, I'm very proud of our schools. I'm a product of the Northampton Public Schools. I have a real affinity for them. But the, system, the problem is larger than just here. The formula is messed up statewide. And the fact that parents who do not have great financial resources have no real other option for where they can take their children if they feel their needs are not being met you know, in the public school. And the way the question's written, many of the new charters would have to go in places where the public schools are really not getting the job done. That's not so much Northampton, because I think our public schools are doing a very good job. But there are many cities in the Commonwealth uh, where the public schools are not really serving the needs of some of their populations. And those people, I think, really, th their kids are only kids once. Their kids need help today. I'm disappointed the legislature isn't being more creative about this. Um, as I said, the, you know, the thought of a gun to their head isn't the most pleasant thing, but I think it really is the only option at this point, which is, which is why you know, I'm just going to abstain. I understand that people feel very strongly about this, but um, I, I really don't want to go along with it because I think for some parents there really is no other option because they don't have the resources. Uh, can we have a roll call on this, please? Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? I abstain. <laughs> Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Okay. That, that passes uh, in second reading. Um, Next up, we have a presentation. Rick Hart is here in place of Ann White, who's the Director of Development at ServiceNet. Uh, this is regarding Shelter Sunday. Rick, thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Actually, I also have Carrie Knapp here, who is for Amanda Meals. So it takes two of us to report. I, I recognize Carrie, too, so. But uh, Did you want I guess that's on? not on, the, the microphone. No. Yeah, your microphone's hot. It is. Yeah. Oh, Maybe wonderful. Maybe you'll hear me. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm Rick Hart. I live uh, in Leeds on Leonard Street, if I need to say that. And I'm the head of the Friends of Hampshire County Homeless, which is why I'm on the Shelter Sunday Coalition uh, representing that. Um, so just to quickly run down what it is, for anyone who doesn't know, I think most of you do, it's a coalition of five community programs that benefit the hungry and homeless in the city. Um, and the five programs are Grove Street Inn, which is the year-round homeless shelter, um, up to 20 women a night, maximum stay four months, and 100 people so far this year have stayed there. Um, then the winter interface shelter, that is the thing that my group is involved with, um, and ServiceNet uh, helps with it, um, which is open November 1st to April 30th, serves about 200 people a year, more or less. Um, who stay overnight, get a couple of meals, uh, have showers, uh, laundry is available to them, and caseworkers. Uh, the third group is Mana Meals, which I won't talk about because Carrie will. It's a, a soup kitchen, uh, the food part of our coalition. We all do food, but they concentrate. Uh, Grace House, which is a residential treatment program for women with children who are also recovering from, 
for the, the women, not the children, <laughs> from addiction, um, who uh, get housing and also a lot of clinical support and training and, and rebuilding stuff. And the Single Room Occupancy Project, otherwise known as SRO Project, um, which is a, a actually a project of a CHD, which helps three, about 300 people at any one time um, who are living in single rooms uh, with <coughs> help with housing stability, with food stability, and with general life skills training, uh, networking. Um, so they represent the people that are either just getting out of homelessness or just hovering over the brink of homelessness. Um, we trade clients a lot, all these groups. They might start out at the winter shelter and go to Grove Street and end up in the SRO and be going to Mana Meals. And so, um, so our common theme is, is really helping individuals gain and maintain a housed, uh, healthy state as much as possible. Um, one of the reasons we want to uh, present this year particularly is that this is the 25th anniversary of Shelter Sunday this year. It's hard to believe it's been that long. And um, the goal for Shelter Sunday, as always, is to increase community awareness of these issues and the solutions being offered uh, and to gather citywide support for those solutions and particularly the solutions that we're offering. Um, so it is a fundraiser. Um, it's, an, it's the major funding source for most of the partners, more so some than others, certainly for my group. It's, it's generally about somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of our money raised comes from just Shelter Sunday, which is important, obviously, to us. Uh, so it's pretty key. Um, public awareness is, is we're really concerned with this year. We're always concerned with it because there's turnover. And every year we get people, we go to them and they say, what's Shelter Sunday? And you think, well, of course, if they've been living here 20 years, you'd think they would know, but a lot of them are new people. The other reason it's important this year is that we're changing the format this year, and we want to let you know about that. It has traditionally been a door-to-door -door canvassing where we try to get every household in the city just going door-to-door. -door. And we've increasingly been having trouble getting to all the doors. We do follow-up mailings, and we do literature drops at, in, at people's doors if we can't reach them. This year, we're, tr we're switching and trying a citywide mailing. We're going to mail an appeal to every household in the city uh, with one of those things that can be returned uh, with the payment. We will still have people going to some streets as much as we can, especially key streets that usually are good neighborhoods for us. Um, we will still be having the collection sites that many of you have seen in places like Stop and Shop and Cereos and the transfer station <coughs> where people man a table and, and uh, have cans to collect. Um, we may have other follow-ups. Our, re our real hope is that the city council members uh, will individually support this by spreading the word as much as possible, forwarding emails that you get. Uh, if you see it on Facebook, passing it out, sharing it widely, uh, just talking it up with people so that they will know what's happening that weekend when, when they said people suddenly get stuff in the mail and see people at their doors and see people at tables, because uh, it really is crucial. Um, I, uh, one of my favorite sayings lately is, is at one of our other appearances earlier this year in another hearing, uh, one of our supporters got up and his whole statement was he walked up and he said, a healthy community is judged by how they treat their most vulnerable members, and he sat down. And I thought, wow, <laughs> I've got to remember that one. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Kerry just to say a little bit more about Mana Meals. But thank you for having us. Can, can Any I questions? ask, yeah. uh, is there a way to also donate online? Uh, there is, yeah. Share? There's a Shelter Sunday website, and you can donate through that. Uh, and that will be in the publicity. It will be on the mailing. Um, we're going to try to get some publicity downtown uh, with flyers that, that say the website. So yeah. yes, that's a good Yeah, that'll be easy to do share and via social media. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. I always forget things. Okay. Carrie, you're up. <laughs> I'm Carrie Knapp. Um, I'm a member of the uh, Coalition for Shelter Sunday, and I'm also on the board of MAN. I've been down there for about four and a half years. Um, <clears throat> I'm just here, just a couple minutes. Um, I'm assuming everyone knows what MANA is. Um, um, we are actually experiencing our 30th anniversary this year. So we started in 1986, um, started at St. John's Episcopal Church um, by Jim Monroe. Um, 
it started off in the Undercroft Sunday morning lunch, soup, sandwiches, all done by volunteers. Basically, man is run the same way. We have better meals and a lot of volunteers. Um, Shelter Sunday is is vital um, in terms of, like Rick said, a lot of our, um, a large percentage of our money comes from um, the money we get from Shelter Sunday. So we're hoping that um, our new mode of um, getting people to um, um, involved um, will work this year. Um, also, just to let you know, uh, we, we MANA serves around and over 15,000 meals a year. Um, and we also do the Christmas and Thanksgiving meals that no one else until last year did. So um, I think we serve um, I think we serve the community well and I'm hoping that the city council can um, support us and um, put it on your Facebook as Rick was saying and tweet whatever that is. Um, and when you get your brochure in the mail, um, send a check. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, uh, Rick's tagline that he's now introduced to us, I think, is actually quite apt and quite. <laughs> and I like to think that uh, we, as a community, at least believe in our hearts. I don't know how well we manifest this through action, but I think that uh, universally you can find that this is this is a program well worth funding and subsidizing. So yeah, I have no problem sharing this. With me. I I just hope it gets half the responses that it the. Uh, Parking increase. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then we'll be able to fund your program for the next 20 years. So, but thank you. Um, we can now come up to the consent agenda, and contained in the consent agenda is the approval of the minutes from September 1st, the 2016 meeting. The also uh, this some referrals, the appointments to the committee on city services, um, the, the arts council. Joe Pesci of 685 Ryan Road, Florence, uh, term to run from October 2016 to June 2019. The Board of Assessors, Denny Nolan of 319 Elm Street, Northampton. This is a term starting October 2016 and would expire June 2019. Margot Welch, uh, 143 Main Street, Northampton. The term to start um, retroactively as of uh, July 2016 and to uh, expire in June 2019. This is a reappointment. And then the planning board, Euripides uh, Del, o Del Oliveira, associate member uh, from 9 Washington Place in Northampton, the term to start October 2016, June 2019. Is there a motion? To approve. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I should also tell you that Jen is texting me that the sound on broadcast is working. It's just on the web, the sound is not working. So people who are streaming this will uh, probably be feel blessed by not being able to hear. But then the folks watching on broadcast haven't noticed any difference. So uh, now we come to uh, where we a point in the meeting where we recess and go into the finance committee meeting, which is contained herein. And that is presided over by Councilor Murphy. Thank you. Take it away. Pam, can you read the roll of finance? Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor Labarge? Present. Councilor Murphy? Here. Very good. We're here. Um, first order would be approval of minutes from our September 1st Move meeting. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and now we have several. Financial orders. The mayor's in queue already, so we'll get going. The first one is 16.157, an order to authorize payment of a previous year bill to Comcast in the amount of $154.83. Be it ordered that the council authorizes payment of a prior fiscal year bill from fiscal year 2016 related to DPW for a Comcast uh, cable service in the amount of, or internet service in the amount of $154.83. We have a motion to put on the floor. Make a motion to put it on. Second. Again, this is just another one of these uh, sm uh, sm uh, small bills that uh, uh, did not come in in time for the uh, end of the fiscal year. We want to pay it. In order to pay it, uh, a bill from a previous fiscal year, we have to have a council order. Um, so I'm asking for your approval. 
didn't you folks say the last time these came up that Comcast was mailing them to pumping there stations a, yeah, and places a, where there really isn't anybody to get them? Yeah, there was an error where the bill had been so mailed. So they just straggle in. Delay. Yeah, so we've um, tried to correct that. Yeah. All right. Uh, any more questions or no? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Next one is 16162. Uh, it's in order to appropriate $13,550 for the purpose of paying costs of a roof replacement schematic design and feasibility study for the Bridge Street School. Order that. The City of Northampton appropriate the amount of $13,550 for the purpose of paying costs of a roofing replacement schematic di di design feasibility study for the Bridge Street Elementary School located at 2 Parsons Street, Northampton, Mass. A school serving public students in grades kindergarten through fifth grade including in the payment is the cost of all incidental or related items hereto and for which the City of Northampton may be eligible for a grant under the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Set amount to be expended under the direction of the Northampton School Building Committee. To meet this appropriation, the City of Northampton City Council, with the approval of the Mayor, will appropriate $9,032 from funds remaining in an account entitled Ryan Road Roof Membrane Project and $4,000 $518 from funds remaining in an account entitled Le Leeds Roof Membrane Project. The City of Northampton acknowledges that the Massachusetts School Building Authority's grant program is a non-entitlement uh, discretionary program based on need as determined by the Massachusetts School Building Authority and any costs the City of Northampton incurs in excess of any grant approved and received from the MSBA shall be solely the responsibility of the city of Northampton. Do we have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second. Okay. So Mr. this this and the next two order are virtually identical and the language uh, contained in it is uh, virtually identical to a previous order that you adopted for both of these Ruth projects. Originally we had estimated the cost for the schematic design feasibility of $40,000. Uh, we were required to pass this order um, and get it to MSBA. Um, and we've now completed the, uh, the actual uh, pricing and um, procurement of said design services, and it is coming in at an additional uh, cost of this 13550 and you'll see the second order, uh, same for the other project. Um, so we need to basically um, appropriate this additional money for the feasibility study. Um, and of course, uh, we were notified of this, and of course the deadline uh, for getting all this stuff into MSBA is uh, September 28th. So that's why we're coming back to you to ask you to adopt this additional um, order funding for the project, and, uh, and that's why we're asking for two readings. Um, again, the MSBA program uh, will uh, reimburse us for over 50% of the costs of these roofs, um, but we have to go through their, um, all of their process and make sure we have all the orders in the proper language that they require. And this sort of unusual language is their requirement. It is their language. So Assuming nobody in their office uh, made this. And you'll note in the language of the, um, you know, of the of, of the order itself, we're actually using money from last year's roof projects that were MSBA funded, mm -hmm. some some um, leftover funds to actually pass along to the, the next school. projects. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions for the mayor from anyone on this one, uh, Councilor? Um, the schematic design feasibility studies are actually mandated by the process and procurement. Yes, indeed. Yep. Any public construction process, any pr public construction project, um, over you know a certain dollar amount requires that you do a a, a, a design and yeah. it, the MSBA program specifically, um, and so yeah, we um, we've taken some hits for any or we subsidize feasibility studies or anal analytical studies in the past, and it should be noted that this yeah, I mean the term yeah, uh, yeah, I think the. Study is a little bit, um, a it's little a bit different than a consultant. This is this is a we're hiring an architect basically right. to uh, design uh, the blueprints that will then be bid out um, on the project. So yeah, but you're right. We do we do this one's definitely required um, to basically to come up with cost estimates and bid documents so that we know what the full project would cost to be approved for the next phase of MSBA. You know, first they have to see. First, you get on the list. You send them a letter of intent, um, and and I think we we had, the council and the school committee had to approve an order just to do that, and then you have to do this feasibility, and then eventually we'll come forward to do the final project. Yeah. So, but again, um, it's a lot of hoops, but it's 
it, it, it uh, beats paying 50, for it ourselves. Yeah, uh, fifty percent reimbursement exactly. is good. Exactly. Yeah, and we've got a, we've had a really good record on our last projects, right? Because we have trailings. That exactly. We're able to apply exactly. to more projects. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, based on estimates. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and part of that too is we had actually started to fund it on our own, and then we got into the MSBA program. So it's yeah, but yeah, it's it's uh, they've it's worked out so far. So hopefully these two projects will also uh, work well. Any other questions for the mayor? If not, all in favor in finance, please say. All right, and this one will sound real similar. It's 16.163 in order to appropriate $13,214 for the purposes of paying costs of a roof replacement schematic design feasibility study for the lead school. Order that the city of Northampton appropriate an amount of $13,214 for the purpose of paying costs of a roofing replacement schematic design feasibility study for the Leeds Elementary School located at 20 Florence Street, Northampton, Massachusetts, a school serving public students in grades kindergarten through fifth grade, including the payment of all costs incidental or related hereto, and for which the city of Northampton may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, set amount to be expended under the direction of the Northampton School Building Committee. To meet this appropriation, the city of Northampton uh, City Council, with the approval of the mayor, will appropriate necessary funds from funds remaining in the account entitled Leeds Roof Membrane Project. The City of Northampton acknowledges that the uh, MSBA's grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the Massachusetts School Building Authority and any costs to the City of Northampton that they incur in excess of any grant approved or received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the City of Northampton. We have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second. Again, as advertised, just like the other one. Exactly, and the same request for two readings. Any, uh, no, uh, when it goes to the council. To council. Any other questions? Uh, yes, councilor. Um, both of these take money from the Leeds uh, account, uh, that the leftover funds. Yeah, th the this Leeds as well as I think the other one took a, um, some money for another project. Ryan Road. Ryan Road. Ryan Road project. So after that, um, what's the status of those? accounts is that just what typically happens is when we do the capital budget every year um, and if you go back and look at your capital budget you'll often see that we will um, appropriate money from unused from uh, from leftover funds from other projects we'll mm -hmm. ask to repurpose it um, so that's generally what happens um, usually the account in this case we did the we did those roofs last year usually the accounts are left open for a little while in case there's any incidentals that occur um, mm -hmm. in the life of the project. But typically what the finance director will do is um, either, will either reprogram it um, in the, um, in the uh, cap next capital budget, um, you know, move money from a project that, that, that left over money into a new project, or in other cases, um, eventually close it all out to free cash. Mm -hmm. So it'll just be closed out to free cash. It'll flow to free cash at the end of the year, and then obviously we'll We'll use it for more capital projects that will have to be uh, re, re, um, reprogrammed. Yeah. And as I recall from uh, capital improvements, that project was for a different portion of the roof. So we did one part of the roof. Exactly. Leads, and now we're yeah. doing another part of the roof at Leeds. Exactly. So the, yeah. The last project wasn't to do the. Whole we didn't roof, do the entire roof. Part of the yeah. roof. Yeah. And some money was left over from that project to do that part. And we're going to yes. reprogram it to do the next part. Exactly. Yeah. So we've been working on that roof yeah, for a while. It has a, uh, yeah, a, a complicated roof system. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions for the mayor? If not, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 And I think that's the end of our agenda. If there's no new business, then a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, so we come back out of recess and back into the regular body of the meeting, and we will revisit those financial orders. Why, right now. Uh, next item up is 16.157. It's the financial order to authorize payment of a previous year bill to Comcast in the amount of $154.83. First Mr. reading. Proof. Second. Second. Motions made in second. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sarah? Yes. Councilor Kern? Yes. yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. Uh, it will be revisited at our next meeting in, on October 6th. The item that we have 
Next is 16.156. This is in order to accept a gift of a crosswalk equipment uh, from Northampton Montessori School. This is a request for two readings. Somehow we did. I, so I whether we already did a first reading yeah, on this. Yeah, we did. Well, we didn't do, we, we think we did, but we never did a first reading on it. What? We didn't do a first reading on it. We converted it to an order, but when we went back in after finance, we never took a first That's reading. Right. Oh, that would be my fault. Okay. I think it's because it was under resolutions yeah. in the main body of the agenda. Got it. Got it. And got so, it. So, um, when you went through all your orders and ordinances, it, it wasn't there because we had converted it to an order. So right. I forgot about enough. that. That's right. <coughs> uh, thank you for covering my. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> so, let's see. But I'm, I'm going to read this so that um, we did read it originally, but this is so the request is now for two reading uh, two readings on this. But this is a. Uh, ordered that the City of Northampton gratefully accepts the donation of crosswalk equipment for Bates Avenue from the Northampton Montessori School. That's in accordance with uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. And uh, as you recall, the Mayor spoke of this <laughs> at the last meeting. Um, but there are any other questions on this? And actually, I need, uh, let's have an official motion to put uh, so first reading on the floor. Okay, the motion's Second. made. Seconded. Uh, any questions of the mayor about this? No. Okay. Any discussion? No. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Chera? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Okay. Suspend Rule 14. Second. Right. Passes in first reading. There's been a request to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading in this meeting. Uh, any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of suspending rules to allow a second reading, please say aye. aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motions made and seconded to put it on the floor for the second time. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Um, we have item 16.162. That's in order to appropriate $13,550 for the purpose of paying costs of a roofing replacement schematic design feasibility study for the Bridge Street School. Move approved. Move approved. Motions made and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lubar? Yes. Yes. That passes the first reading. Suspend Rule 14. Second. So motions made and seconded to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I'll accept a motion. Second. Motions made and seconded to put it on the floor. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. All right, that passes in two readings. Item 16.163, uh, in order to appropriate $13,214 for the purpose of paying costs of a roofing replacement or polishment, a uh, schematic design feasibility study for the Leeds Elementary School. Second. And second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Passes in first reading. Suspend Rule 14. Second. Motions made and seconded to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Second reading. Second. Motions made and seconded to put it on the floor for a second reading. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Passes in second reading. Item 16.149, this is in order to authorize payment for a previous year bill for the DPW. This is second reading. This is another Comcast bill. Motions made and second. Any discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. 
That passes in second reading. Also in second reading is this item 16.150. It's in order to appropriate $17,045 for stair repair at the Academy of Music. Move to approve. Motion's made and second. Any discussion further on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. That passes in second reading. Item 16.151 in order to appropriate $41,137 for the replacement of a 1986 six wheeler sander for DPW. Second reading. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Yes. Uh, we're almost through it. Item 16.152 is in order to rescind borrowing authority for various projects. Uh, second reading. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion on this? May we take um, this item and the next as a group? You want, okay. Uh, there's a request to take uh, item 16.152 and 16.153 as a group. Is there any objection? Uh, I'll accept that as a motion. And actually, is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor, please say <coughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So as a group, the other item is 16.153 in order to rescind borrowing authority for various projects. They're both the same. It's separate projects, however. And this as was approved in the first reading in the meeting last uh, two weeks ago. Any further discussion on these two items? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Chair? Yes. Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Okay, those pass in second reading. Now we're up to uh, ordinances. Um, item 16.135. This is an ordinance relative to a bus stop on Main Street, 312 to 114. This is the first reading. It comes with a positive recommendation from the Committee on Legislative Matters from uh, September 12th. Move approval. Second. 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 Motion's made and seconded uh, to put on the floor. Does anyone want to discuss this? Councilor O'Donnell. Um, this started in the Transportation and Parking Commission. Uh, concerns the bus stop that is um, right in front of the Edwards Church currently. And uh, it amends the ordinance. Well, the intent is to transfer the bus stop to the other end of the block, more towards where the crosswalk is now at Masonic Street. And I say it that way because the ordinance doesn't really reflect where the bus stop actually is currently. So the ordinance just, it, it will reflect the reality that we want to achieve, which is to move the bus stop to that block, to that side of the block. The reason why is primarily for safety reasons. Uh, the a representative from the PVTA came to the Transportation Parking Commission. They've been experimenting with different locations with this bus stop for a long time. And it's their current thinking uh, based on what their observations have been about how it's used, that this is actually a better and safer location for the bus stop. Um, it does cause us to lose um, parking spaces. Um, you could, in theory, make them up on the other side. Um, so there's, there's yeah. currently no language that yeah. already specifies the replacement spaces. So. Right. So that's what we'll have to figure out. This is oh, but that's, that's, that's a different, different picture. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not. Yeah. It um, doesn't look like this at all. Okay. Yeah. So the image that you're looking at has nothing to do with the bus stop. It's so just a pretty yeah. aerial shot of downtown. It's like, where's can't the hear fire anymore? of the church? <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just to relax <laughs> you. <laughs> that's, that's coming up. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's the purpose um, behind it. Actually, uh, you know, by way of explanation, the PVTA came to the Transportation Park Commission with two requests. The other one concerned the parking uh, the bus stop on the other side of the road parallel to Pulaski Park. The request there was that they expand that bus stop by eliminating the one sort of orphan, um, sad, lonely orphan um, parking space between the bus stop and that crosswalk, the same crosswalk on the other side of the street. And actually we voted that down um, because we thought uh, there'd be visibility problems there. So. Two proposals came to us, one of them survived, and for both of them, our, our uh, yardstick was whether it improves public safety, so that's the reason. Councilor Klein? I'm just curious, how many spots are we losing? And I think it's going to be two, and if I'm not mistaken. And will the Transportation and Parking Commission work on um, creating language to replace them? Um, I certainly favor doing that, yeah. 
if it's possible, I have to, yeah, it, to the degree we can, yeah. And that was another reason why we didn't want to eliminate the parking space on the other side of the street. Um, you know, just very, we'd be very cautious when we eliminate parking spaces downtown. So. Council Murphy and then Council Lubar. Can, can they be added where the bus stop used to be, or is that too close to the intersection for parking well, space? Yeah, that's yeah, kind of the thing. trick of it, yeah. So that's why I don't have the answer right now, but uh, we want the DPW to look at the situation and, close. yeah. Also, you know, that kind of serves as a turning lane. Yeah. You know, even when the bus is there, which is part of the problem. So. Um, but that's true. The, the yeah. two problems presented itself. The bus would be parked essentially in the right turn lane for, mm -hmm. for State Street. Mm -hmm. And then when the bus was taking off, it wanted to go straight, which meant it had to cut across two lanes in order exactly. to get traffic. Exactly. Yep. So. Yep. Council LaBarge and then Councilor Klein. Oh, no. I'm just looking at the map. Just looking at the picture. I thought you wanted to speak. Councilor Klein. Thank you. Um, I just, I seem to remember that we lost two parking spaces. I think it was on State Street right on the other side there. So that yeah. means in the last, is that wrong? I we mean, decreed it. It didn't happen. Yeah. Just they're still there. <laughs> oh, they so are still there. Still there. <laughs> I was going to say in the last year, that would have been four spots in that area. And that can be a lot for people going to the academy and to the, the restaurants right in that area. But... If those spots are still there, I'm not quite as concerned. They're, they're there in reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not on okay. and, and don't worry, we're, we're about to create another parking space when we get to the next ordinance, so. Pictures of Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking for the spire on the church there. It seems to have that's, been. That's eliminated. Old South. That's not. I know, I know. I was <laughs> but there's a space going. Just <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Any other questions relative to this? Um, okay. Uh, roll call. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Okay, that passes the first reading. We'll be back for a second reading on the 6th. Um, we have item 16.136 is an ordinance relative to parking on Old South Street. Uh, 312 to 109 is the first reading. And this also comes with a positive recommendation uh, from the Committee on Legislative Matters. <laughs> okay, motion's made, seconded. Sorry? I guess I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sheriff seconded. There is. You are, uh, Councilor O'Donnell already referred to this. If you want to expand on it a little bit. Yeah, I'll save you reading what would sound like a bunch of random numbers. Um, but it amends three sections of the code, uh, the on-street parking meter zones, um, parking prohibited zones, and limited time parking. And this is where a picture is worth however many words this is. Um, this picture kind of explains what's going on. It, it, it um, specifies rules for Old South Street. The only change, it clarifies a lot of the current, of the way the current situation is. The only change is we are creating a parking space down by um, whatever the Ryan's auto, auto place. All the way down, that's the new one. The oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen. Yeah. The one you were, yeah. yep. Yes, exactly. The green one, I think that's green, is um, that's a, a 15 minute yeah. space. Oh. That's why that has a different color. Um, so new space. So New space with a that purple. Exactly. Purple. Yes. So um, that's what this ordinance does. Um, there's, a, you know, one reason is the Max Bus. I don't know if anyone followed the, the short life and death of the Max Bus, but the, there was a, uh, um, I guess a direct a direct route bus that was stopping right there for a while. I think with the Worcester in Boston, and it just, um, I don't think it. Uh, I suspect it's not going to be around for that long. So we can put a parking space there. Uh, no one knows one. the mass bu max bus. That's what I was going to ask about because <laughs> I remember from the Transportation and Parking yeah. Commission that we had approved that as a bus stop, that the bus would actually sit there for a while while people kind of came. And so I'm just, you know, if, if in fact that still does exist, how is that going to work with that new spot? Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, my strong suspicion is that that's, the, that's not going to be a problem. I think the max bus is probably not going to. So become in the city. It is yeah. still in existence, though. It might be for a little while. Oh, maybe Councilor Sherry remembers. I, I, I feel like I remember um, 
Wayne Fiden saying that it was no longer stopping there. Okay. The max bus is maxed out according to yeah. some yeah. testimony? And actually, we never, I think the Transportation Parking Commission never actually formally approved the bus stop there, but it, it shows how little power we actually have because the max bus came anyway, but now, now the max bus is gone. So. Came and it left and we're putting a space back. <laughs> That's right. So we're cl reclaiming what is rightfully ours. <laughs> Well, their website's still up. They celebrated their one year anniversary last year. <laughs> so Happy birthday. Not making it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's terrible. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lazar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Chair? Yes. Okay. That passes in first reading. Um, might might hear from Max Bus in the intervening time, but October six mm. for the final reading of this. <laughs> Item sixteen point one five eight. Um, Actually, could we move these as a group? Okay, the motion is made. Five nine and sixty and six. Uh, that's all. Yeah. Yep. We're the same thing in yeah, different zones over and over again. So these are all to be referred to the committee on legislative matters. Was the request to move them as a group? That's item C, D, E, and F. Move as a group. The motion's made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now I have to read them. Or just the titles anyway. This is uh, item 16158 is an ordinance to amend section 350 attachment 7 of the city code by reinserting previously adopted provision for large scale ground mounted solar array systems by special permit for URB districts. And that's, as I said, to be referred to the Committee on Legislative Matters. Item 16.159 is an ordinance to amend Section 350, Attachment 7 of City Code, by reinserting previously adopted provision for large-scale ground-mounted solar array systems by special permit for URA districts. And that, again, referred to the Committee on Legislative Matters. Item 16.160 is an ordinance to amend Section 350, Attachment 7 of the City Code, by reinserting previously adopted provision for large-scale ground-mounted solar array systems by permitting, uh, by special permit for SR districts, again, to refer to the Committee on Legislative Matters. And finally, item 16.161, an ordinance to amend Section 350, Attachment 7 of the City Code by reinserting previously adopted provision for large-scale ground-mounted solar array systems by special uh, permit for RR districts, so again, to refer to the Committee on Legislative Matters. Any discussion on the referral? Move to refer. Uh, they did. We uh, got them all moved. Mm -hmm. That was. Oh, we did? Yep. Yeah. As a group. As a group. Uh, no, no discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, <coughs> Mayor still here? No. No. Katie May stepped out. He's gone. Okay. He took the maximum. Well, we have an explanation letter uh, from the mayor for parking ordinance changes, which I will read since he's not here to read it. Um, this is a letter addressed to me. Uh, Dear President Dwight, please find and close three proposed ordinance changes uh, related to downtown parking. I would respectfully request that they be placed on the September 15, 2016 agenda for referral to the Transportation Parking Commission and Committee on Legislative Matters. These proposed downtown parking changes are the first of several that I will be submitting over the next m few months, as I outlined on the June, at the June 28, 2016 meeting of the Committee on City Services. These and subsequent ordinance changes, together with planned downtown signage and technology upgrades, are based on recommendations contained in the Downtown Northampton Parking Management Study, which can be found on the City's website, prepared for uh, the City by Walker Parking Consultants. The ordinance ch changes enclosed are specifically designed to implement the recommendation that Class 1A on-street parking along Main Street in downtown be extended from one hour be extended from one hour to two hours, with the hourly fee increase increased from 75 cents per hour to a dollar. I am not promo I am not proposing implementation of the study's additional recommendation to extend the hours of Main Street parking enforcement from 6 to 8 p.m. My decision is based on both feedback from downtown merchants and a concern that creating varying hours of enforcement for on-street parking 
and our relatively compact downtown will create confusion and frustration for parking customers. I had originally indicated to the Committee on City Services that our plan was to time the implementation of all proposed downtown parking changes with the deployment of upgraded pay station technology that will include the ability to pay with credit cards or a smartphone application. Because the procurement and installation of this technology will not be complete by the end of the year, I'm putting forward these enclosed ordinance changes now so that two-hour parking on Main Street could be in place for the benefit of downtown merchants by the start of the holiday shopping season in November. And the three enclosed ordinances also include additional changes designed to ensure system-wide consistency with the changes occurring on Main Street. They also contain the creation of a new three-hour off-street parking lot classification that I will later propose to be applied to two of our downtown lots, Masonic and Armory, when the aforementioned new parking technology is ready for deployment. Thank you for your attention in this matter. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Sincerely, David. So that was the letter that actually kind of got reported when it first, I mean, some of it, at the the stuff that kind of prompted the hot spots. Uh, but I'd like to refer them, move them as a group, because they're doing 312, section 36, section 109, and section 110. And since we're just referring them, not re discussing them at this point, exactly. I don't want the three of them together, because they're so all related. So Council Murphy is requesting that we move as a group item 16.164, 16.165, 16.166. To uh, refer them to the Committee on Legislative Matters and uh, Transportation and Parking. To refer to Legislative Matters and Transportation and Parking. Okay. And seconding them as a group? A okay. As a Motion's group. made and seconded. This is discussion on moving them as a group. Any discussion on that? All those in favor of moving these as a group, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now to the items on referral. Is there any discussion on the items for referral? No. Uh, all those in favor of referring these to the two committees, uh, Committee on Legislative Matters and Transportation Parking, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So those will be in committee to be discussed. And that brings us to this really edgy, scintillating meeting that we've had this evening. Um, I have nothing to add. There's no updates. Uh, Councilor O'Donnell? And I, I probably should have announced this as a one-minute announcement, but... It's okay. You as the chair of transportation and parking, since it's an issue of uh, significant community interest, I'll say this is something that's going to be on our agenda for discussion on Tuesday, September 20th at 4 o'clock um, in the council chambers, the, uh, the parking ch uh, changes proposed by the mayor. So, September 20th, 4 o'clock. Yep, Tuesday, September 20th. So. Okay. Uh, any sense on legislative matters? It would be the 12th, which will be after transportation and parking and if you would all remind people that you'll make your recommendations and they'll have another crack at it in yeah. legislative matters on the 12th at five o'clock so the discussion can continue Great. very good okay well no other information to offer no new business i will accept the last the penultimate or the Move ultimate adjourn. motion Move to adjourn. Adjourn. Motion's made to adjourn and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you all very much. We are adjourned.